Okay, Shalom, Shalom, Oscar, Brother Kadash. I want to start off by giving our praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rakat Kadash, right? I'm going to name this, um, the title of this video is going to be named, This is All We Got to Do, pretty much, you know, and I want to go into the book of Acts, chapter 2, and just get straight to the point, like at verse 38, and pretty much the answer to what we have to do as a body, pretty much. You know, but um, there's been a lot going on lately, you know, there's been a great awakening lately. And the question is being, and the question is being answered of like, what is it that we need to do now? What's the next step that we have to do now? And this is the answer that I'm, spot, that I'm about to read, right? But yeah, and no, because at the same time, is it for right now? Maybe not. But I know at some period of time, because it's Bible prophecy, we are going to come together, meaning the house of Judah and the house of Israel is going to come together as one. Eventu I mean, eventually, like, in the kingdom, that's going to happen, but it's also going to happen on this side before we actually um, go under the bond of the new covenant, before we're actually changed to go to the kingdom, you're going to see the uh, 12 tribes come together, you know, and I personally believe that's going to happen, you know, when all hell break loose. Some people call it shit hit the fan or whatever you want to call it, right? You're going to see our people start to come together because we're going to have to just for survival during the time until our king returns, which is Yahweh Shai, of course, that's the missing piece. So it's not only about us coming together as the 12 tribes, but it's also about us coming back with our king and coming back with our father, you know, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. And then when you get that together, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, and the Israelites all together, then that's the full thing, right? And that includes the um the African Americans, uh, Native Americans, and the Latinos, you know, which make up the 12 tribes of Israel, you know. So I'm going to read this. This is Acts 2, verse 38. It says, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yahweh Shai and Mashiach for the remission of their sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Right. And that's what is important right there is receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. But like I said, it's a gift. It's a gift that's given to you. You know, you ain't like you could just choose it. You know, it's like you're chosen, you know, and that's what it means to be elected, to be elected, to be saved, you know, and to get this truth. And we are super blessed. I say like me and um, Kwana, we're super blessed because really it's just me and him in our city. And we and the Lord has given us a big gift to for us to have the Holy Ghost, to go as hard as we go and to continue going as hard as we go. And continue to have faith and do the work and serve the Lord. The Lord is putting that gift upon us, even though we ain't got like a large brotherhood to um, lean on. But, you know, we use the Internet to watch brothers videos and stuff like that to be edified and to get oil and stuff like that. But I mean, just imagine, you know, a lot of people couldn't do that, you know, where it's just you and another brother. And y'all out in a whole city where y'all holding it down. Just really y'all too on the highways and byways as far as the one Westers. Not saying that we're the only hopefully elect in our town. But as far as like one Western doc doctrine, you know, on the highways and byways with the gardens and the fringes. So that's a major gift that the Lord has given us, you know, because that's something that you're not supposed to take lightly. You know, the gift that the Lord gives you of the holy ghost right now it's important for us to come together and it's going to happen you know so you have our people being pulled you know you have our people being pulled one side by the entertainers your rappers your athletes you know um, politicians and all that shit right then you have us pulling on one side you know what i've been seeing is you know um the the tide has been turning you know and and we've been you know the rope has been slipping towards our direction if i must say right <clears throat> And what is causing is a lot of these guys to start to switch sides, which is a good thing, you know, which is a good thing. But a lot of guys is doing it out of strife. They starting to come and try to pick with us and talk shit. You see a lot of people showing up to a lot of different brothers camps to talk shit, to scoff because now they losing it. And you especially see that with these Christians, you know, these churches and stuff like that. They losing their power. And now the Lord, the Lord said in Zephaniah chapter three that he would get us fame in all lands. Right. So that's what you're seeing right now. Is you're seeing us start to get that fame and this is only the beginning of it but you're seeing it start to be translated to us 
and these other guys don't like it so they start to try to pick with us but not even more because like it never made no sense to me it's like all this is happening right and you know what's coming if you read the bible which is jacob's trouble right and all this shit is happening but your hate for us is so much that you would rather attack us than just going out there and prophesying and being on fire right now because you could clearly tell we're at the end. So that tells me that you're not seeking the kingdom. You're not seeking the Lord like it says in Zephaniah. You're not seeking the Lord first. You're not seeking the kingdom like it says in Matthew chapter 6. You seeking, like I put up a video looking to be offended. You're looking to be offended. You're coming and trying to start bullshit with us, right? And I'm talking about events with, which happen, which really ain't... I'm talking about events that happen, but not really giving much details. But if you know, you know, you know. So it's like you trying to start shit with us rather than just being on fire, teaching the truth, because we get into the end. You're not really seeking the kingdom. You know, you're you just mad and you're a hater. And, and this is what these guys do, man. They did the same thing with Yahweh Shai. They wasn't seeking the kingdom. They was hating off them, you know, the wicked elders and scribes and stuff like that. They was just hating off of them. You know, you too much focus about that while, while we're over here and we're focused on what? Doing the work the best we can to the best of our abilities. And then these guys, especially these Internet um, Christian slash Hebrews, you know, they're kind of like hybrids now. You know, these guys is worried about like exposing us or some shit like that. While we're worried about just growing in the truth and continuing in the truth, these guys are worried about exposing us. While we're seeking the kingdom, they're seeking to expose us or come against us because they never really believe. They never seek the kingdom. Really, they was always seeking other things, you know, like saving Esau. <laughs> that's why that's why that's they number one fucking wary in the world. Not saving Ammon, not saving Moab, not saving Ishmael, but saving Esau, you know. Um, but pretty much, you know, we have it coming from that end. And then we don't have it coming from the Edomites, you know. They starting to lose their grip, and they don't like all this attention being on them and them being exposed. And the truth coming out that the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the true Israelites. They don't like that, so you know they got plans behind the scenes of things they want to do. And, you know, our own brothers, but they slash Christian slash Hebrews, right? They don't like that either. So they going to be, don't, man, don't be surprised. You know, you're going to see a lot of Judas out here judas iscariots out here you're going to see a lot of those events play out you're going to see a lot of traitors just because of hate and jealousy now that the lord is starting to put the light on us don't nobody want to hear that um now now we are the true christians right but christianity shit don't nobody want to hear that christianity shit man they want to come here from the true christians the hebrew israelites they want to hear about the guys with the 12 tribes chart they want to hear about the guys with the garments and the fringes or on the highways and byways yelling they want to hear about the guys talking about the native americans um you know i always switch it up um you know but the same thing native americans latinos and african americans sometimes i say the negroes latinos native americans same thing right um they want to hear about they want to hear that talk right now that's the that's the talk of the town right now they want to hear that talk they don't want to hear that shit everybody could be saved shit they, they don't want to hear that shit man that shit's played out and dead just like kimmy they don't want to hear about that egyptian shit right now the whole world is focused and eyes is on this thing, this little thing of ours, but this great thing of ours that the um, Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans are the true Israelites. That's what the whole world eyes and ears is on right now. I know because of the uh, traffic that's been coming through the channel. And I know all that's happening because the plays that the Lord is doing to wake people up, there's a great awakening. They don't want to hear that bullshit no more. They don't want to hear um, we're Gentiles. But um, we can follow the Lord and everybody could be one together and be saved. That shit's played out, man. And that's making these dudes hate off of us and come up against us. But it's going to make Esau come up against us, too. Now, Esau, he just got a natural hatred against us, man. I was at the plantation not too long ago when I seen this Edomite. And you always see him because I'm way smarter than him. And I could see him from a mile away because I already know what type of spirit. See, when you in this truth, you see things. Right. And this is what I just read. You should receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, that gift allows you to be able to see things right that a normal Jake out there may not see because he wants to be buddy buddy or a Christian slash Hebrew Internet warrior. He not going to see it because he wants to be arm to arm with these heathens. But since I could see it, you know, I see things from all the way. So I already peek him. I peep him. Right. He's an Edomite. Boom. Okay, I peep him. I peep him 
peeping me, but he ain't know that I peeped him peeping me. So I always play it off, you know what I mean? Because really playing dumb gives you like an advantage, you know, because they don't know that you know, you know, you always have that advantage over you. I always play that. I always play that, bro. That's like one of my, <laughs> that's like one of my, uh, one of my best moves, you know what I mean? Um, so I peep him, peep me. So I'm like, all right, I already see him. He looking at me. I'm like, why is he even looking at me? All he got to do is do his job, do what he got to do and go on about his day and don't even pay me no mind, no attention. That's all he got to do. You know what I mean? So we get in his office. He already in there. I peeped him. He, I already see him. But, you know, I'm playing it off. He don't he still don't see me see him when I'm peeping him. You know, it's like a quick glance. And then I already done examine everything I needed to examine. That's how I made it this far, man. <laughs> but anyways, um, so I come in through the door. I see him standing by the door looking at me. You know, I ain't going to pay him no mind. But, you know, he's another man. I'm a man. We in each other presence. I, I'm going to let you know I see you. I'm going to let you, you know, you let me know you see me. We each other present. So I'm going to greet you as a man supposed to greet another man when another man's in the presence, you know. So I say, what's up? You know, I say, what's up? How you doing? He says, what's up? Now, I already know the bullshit is coming because Esau just has a burning hatred against a Jake. It don't matter what I do, what I say. I didn't do anything to anybody. I'm minding my own business, just me and him there, right? But just seeing my figure, just seeing the wooly hair, just seeing the black skin, just seeing the Jake features already, it's like an instinct. It could be unconscious. He could not even know he's doing this, but it's an instinct already of that burning hatred against Jake. So, of course, he tries to little kid me some me you know try to give me some advice and this is what Esau always does right he always want to give you some type of advice of like how you should follow the rules right now we we drive trucks right um so he want to give you some advice and always act like there's some boogeyman you could get in trouble so he's telling me like hey you know hey bro you shouldn't be like speeding around here so i'm like oh here go Esau with him with him wanting to correct jake he always want to correct Jake and give Jake some advice. But if he see one of his brothers, another Edom might do something, hey, hey, it's just hey, it's just trucking. Hey, that's how trucking is. You know, you know how truck drivers is. This is just how trucking is. He ain't going to get no fuck. He going to laugh at it and be buddy, buddy. He might even hot five him. You know, you a bad boy. But with Jake, he always want to correct Jake because that's that supremacy shit. It's always I'm higher than you. I'm better than you. Let me come down and let me correct you. To show my supremacy over you. So, you know, I tell him, I said, man, I know what's going on around here. I, I, I said, I said, I know what's going on around here. Yeah, everything good. He like, he like, yeah, because, you know, it's a guy right around here. And this is him making up some mystical feature uh, or, or or some mystical creature that don't exist. Ain't no guy driving around writing people up. I've been working here for years. I know exactly what's going on. That's why I told him I know exactly what's going on around here. I ain't, I ain't worried about nothing. They don't like that, you know, because it's like everybody break all the rules of any rule that's ever been created. Right. <laughs> Let's just throw that out there. Right. And um, they do that shit all day. But when a uh, Jake do it, you got to be perfect. Oh, no, no, you can't be doing that. You know what I mean? So he like, yeah, guy, come on here. He, you know, he, the guy catch you. He write you up. And I told him, I said, he ain't going to I say I say he ain't going to do shit. And I told him again, I looked at him and I said, he ain't going to do shit. And then I walked out the door. So we ain't even got that much time to communicate. But I'm just letting you know I ain't worried about none of that shit. I ain't scared of none of that shit. He ain't going to do shit. You know what I mean? And I could see his eyes get kind of big because it was like, it was like, damn, like, like this, this an N word, you know, that's not um, chained to the system. That's not afraid. This is one that that's bucking up. That's and they hate that shit, bro. I go through that shit a lot. Like. We're racing in the race car world and all that shit. I, I understand. I go through that shit a lot because the first thing they want to do is show their supremacy over you and sun you. They want to boy you. You know what I mean? And and they hate when you stand up and be like, man, hey, I ain't trying to hear that shit. Hey, shut up, man. Because I'll I be bold. Like anybody that know me know I don't, I don't play that shit. I'll be ready to go. You know what I mean? But you still got to be wise, right? So I'll be bold. I'll tell a motherfucker. I'll tell a motherfucker, hey, shut up. <laughs> soon as he get to say something hey shut up i don't want to hear that go t go say that shit to the birds and i'll walk out you know what i mean and because i never heard such such grown man cry so much man 
Grown men crying and complaining about shit, but they only doing that because of that burning hatred. So you're going to have that aspect. That shit is going to ramp up in even more because when you have like outages and shortages and shit like that, famines and shit like that, you're going to have Edomites out here still trying to uphold the laws and they're going to be taking the laws in their own hands to try to uphold them just like that um dude um his name started with an r and he had did that shit when he had pretty much got a gun and everything he went out there on a rampage mode just himself to try to up um uphold the law when all that shit was going on with the protests and stuff with the city so you're gonna have edomites that's gonna try to do that but this is all we gotta do right here verse 39 of acts 2 it says for the promise is unto you and to your children that's why they have that burning hatred Remember, because I'm only going to read this precept, but that goes back to Genesis um, 27, right? That promise, right? And to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God should call, which are all Israelites, right? Because we were scattered. And when you understand that the Israelites were scattered amongst all people, that's who the all is. There's no difference between Jew and Greek because those Greeks were Israelites just living as Greeks, you know, same thing as today you got um, African Americans and Native Americans and Latinos living as just regular Americans, but really they're Israelites, same thing, same same exact thing, right, they following Christmas and everything, Thanksgiving and all that, but they not following the high holy days, so they not living as Jews, right, inwardly, so it says, verse 40, and with many other words did he testify and exhort and saying, save yourself from this upward generation right so we got to save ourselves right but this is the thing like when you guys is talking shit and you guys are coming up against us you can't do nothing for the, you can't do nothing against the truth but for the truth you can't do nothing but help the truth really it's like a juggernaut you only gonna make us stronger because now when you come talk shit that's just gonna give me more faith to come on here and go even harder and talk shit too and bring out the truth and edify so really you you could do nothing against the truth but for the truth Right, verse 41 says, Then they that glad, I'll be happy when shit happens. I'll be like, Oh, yep, go ahead, yep. Because I already know this is going to put me on fire again. Right? And I stay on fire. Y'all already know that. But it says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Right? That's a lot. That's more than, like, I would say probably any camp got. But if you add women in there, maybe like the top two biggest camps may have close to that. It says, with women and children, it says, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayer. But this is how you get that to happen. This right here. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And we know different leaders try to put fear tactics out there to get brothers to act right. We already know that. We know how that shit go, right? Now, check this out. Um, but this is the real way you're supposed to do it. In verse 44, and all that believe were together and had all things in common. And that's the answer to what we have to do. We have to believe, right? And um, it says, uh, all that believe were together. We have to come together. Not just like say we're together, but I feel like we got to come together physically. Because when you read this, they were actually physically living together, meaning like communities. We have to start having communities. And we know Esau as he didn't always came and destroyed our communities but the difference this time is we'll have the lord on our side and often approve it just let me keep reading right it says um verse 45 and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men and, and every man had need so imagine if we all sell all our possessions all our goods and imagine the great wealth that we would be able to come up with right and we come and we and when i say buy communities i ain't talking about buying city blocks I'm talking about buying land, right, and building on it, right? And, you know, Esau's going to try to slow it down, but this is one major factor, though. The difference between black people coming together on Black Wall Street and the Hebrew Israelites coming together with communities. I'm going to show you. Verse 46, and they continue daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. You know, if we all come together, let's just say, like, all the major camps and stuff, and even the, um, you know, two-man, one-man groups and stuff like that, they come together. You know, you know, it ain't going to be nothing but a whole bunch of teaching. We're going to stay in the spirit just being together, right? It says, did eat the meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people, and that and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. That's the missing key. 
when we come together as Hebrew Israelites and try to keep the law, statutes, commandments, the Lord's going to add. The Lord's going to be there. That's the dif difference with Black Wall Street and them just coming together, but probably still being wicked in different places. And the Lord sending Esau to bomb the city and take them out. That's the big difference because the Lord's going to be with us. Now, I understand your concern about the bickering and the arg argument. That's going to happen probably like, you know, in the beginning, that's going to happen. But that shit going to phase out very fast, I believe, you know. And I believe brothers could come together because of our nature. You know, already our nature is not to, even though they portray us to be that way and our people have became demons, right, because they follow after what? The other nations. And that's what made them Gentiles. But really our nature, our nature like it says in Genesis 25, um, Esau was like a man of the field, but um, Jacob was like a man of the um, tent. A plain man, you know, we and when you in the tents, what are you doing? We together. That's the whole point. So we could come together more than anybody else on earth, but they try to portray it like we can't, you know, and they try to keep it that way like we can't. But really more than anybody on earth, we could come together. And that's why our shit going to be so tight in the kingdom and it's going to last so long and it's going to be so much greater. And that's why that's one of their greatest fears, because they really know that deep down. So, yeah, we might argue at first about doctrine and stuff like that, but I feel like eventually with the Lord help, you know, anything is possible. Those things would get weeded out and whatever the truth is will rise to the top and then it would be very peaceful. And I believe that's going to happen probably when the grid goes down, all hell break loose. Maybe, you know, World War Three has already started pretty much, you know, and. Then when the grid goes down, then brothers and communities are going to start coming together in order to survive, you know. So that's the answer. Just a little quick video. Hopefully it was edifying with that. I'm going to say salvation to you. Let's